Hello, I'm John and welcome to another of my Toon Boom Harmony tutorial videos. This series is called Basics and I'm simply taking new users of Toon Boom Harmony from opening the software for the first time right through to finishing a first animation. Um, so in this series we are creating a Batman character and animating him in a very short animation. Uh, and we are now up to the stage where I'm going to design and draw and create the backgrounds for animation. In the last video we rigged Batman and today it is time to create the backgrounds. Now I've spent most of the day making the backgrounds already. Um, normally I would obviously do it on screen with you but because it takes so long I decided that my computer wouldn't handle that. So I've created the background already and I'm now going to talk you through how I did it. It's a slightly different than normal so I hope that's okay with you. So the first thing that I always do when trying to create backgrounds is find some reference material. Now obviously with Google it's really really easy. So in this case I went into Google and searched for I think it was New York Alleyway or something like that and just picked a few different images that kind of showed um, a sort of slightly dark sort of manky dirty alleyway in any kind of sort of American style uh, hopefully a bit like what a Batman film would look like and I kind of used those as my inspiration for my background. I then got to come into Harmony and I create a new layer which is down here is already called uh, back sketch and in my palettes I create a new palette called background so don't forget always create a new palette per character and per background that way you shouldn't get confused and then I basically I then sketched out on this layer a, a rough background so let me turn it on so you can see it now it's quite big so yeah it's going to be quite hard to see the full thing in one go but I'll show you so basically it's it's absolutely huge um, and I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see it. But basically, the the thing is that's really important is to draw it to scale, because obviously, if you draw it really um, small or really big, when you scale it down to match your character, the line thickness will change. Um, so in this case, um, you'll see that the lines are roughly the same size on my sketch as my Batman character. So let me just come over here. So the idea is that Batman's going to start over this side of the, of the background. He's going to run along um, this sort of dirty alleyway. And when he gets to about where he is here, he's going to repel, using a kind of repel gun, up the side of this building here. So he's going to go zooming up here, and he's going to land on top of it, roughly about here. And then run along past this sign and kind of skid to a halt next to this kind of eagle, sort of gargoyle thing. And obviously look at the Batman symbol. And then after doing that, he's going to jump off and dive down this building where the credits are going to be. So quite a simple animation but obviously it's quite a big background. So this background probably took me about two or three hours to um, actually kind of design and draw. I reckon about two or three hours. Um, and then after I did that, I obviously then broke the background down and finished the drawing. So for example, this sort of random lines here at the front, that's the kind of foreground. So they're kind of like dustbins and boxes and they're all black and gonna be slightly blurred. Um, so I didn't do much detail here, but they're, but they're on one layer. The um, actual alleyway kind of background itself, with all the bo all the bins and the doors and stuff, that's on a separate layer. I then put this lamp post here on another layer, because uh, that'll have a kind of glow, um, blurred light effect on it. This big building that he jumps onto um, is on a separate layer, and then we have three um, sort of city background layers. So this one here, if you can see it, is kind of this random building shape, is one layer, and then we've got two more layers at the back. And also there's a sky layer as well. I'll show you all this in, in the um, node view later. And then also there's a layer for the for the, the Batman beam, light beam. So I broke those down into different layers and finished the drawings. Okay, so what I'll do now is I will show you the final background and then kind of show you each section, uh, each piece of background uh, one at a time. So I'll just turn off the sketch layer and turn on all the background layers. So if I zoom out, you'll see the whole background as one. And it, as you can see, it's quite a big background. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the different sections. So the first one we'll start with is this foreground bit in the alleyway. So again, these are just kind of like a silhouette of dustbins and signs and cardboard boxes and stuff uh, that will be sitting in front of Batman. So he'll, he'll be running behind it and it'll be slightly blurred. That way it'll kind of give an idea of focus with the camera. Um, but that will look quite nice when it's um, properly rendered. Obviously the next section is the, actually alley the alleyway itself. I can move these bits around to show you. So that's one whole section there. Um, that is basically will be completely still. Then we have the lamp post over here is on a separate layer, 
and I've added a kind of gradient effect on the sort of stream of light coming from the light. And the reason I've made it a separate layer is so that I can put Batman either in front of the light or behind it. Because obviously if he goes behind the light, it will obviously affect his colour on his on him. So that will be quite a nice effect as he um, interacts with it as such. The next section is the new, the other building he jumps on top of. Um, this also has a sign on top. And the idea here is that basically one light bulb isn't working and the other light bulb is. So this this light here is on a separate layer again. Um, so that I can put Batman behind the light as he runs past it. So obviously that will affect the, his colour again. Other background layers, we have this kind of uh, first building layer, which is broken down into two big sections here. Um, again, that's just solid black with like little aerials and, and kind of cables and chimneys and stuff. Just, just to kind of give a bit of a, a, a bit of detail and atmosphere. Then we have another massive background layer. Again, with a little bit of detail, but not too much. And then behind that, we have a very undetailed background layer. And then finally, we have a gradiented sky, which is slightly yellow at the bottom to kind of give the light pollution and gets darker um, towards the top. And then I think finally, we have the Batman logo, which I've put onto a peg so I can move that around and obviously warp it and stuff in the sky. And so as he's standing there with his cape waving in the wind, and that kind of thing. And obviously down here we have my credits. Um, so that is basically the background how, and how I've broken it down. I will just show you the node view as well because that's quite important. Um, so I've, I've basically grouped, here's the Batman background layer group. So if I go into the group you'll see what I've done here. So I've got one sort of master peg for the background and then I've got all the, obviously these ones here, the light blue ones, are all the different drawing layers that I've got. So I've got the sky, the, the two background sort of city landscape layers, um, the, the solid black background uh, uh, building layer, I've got the alley, the light, the bat symbol waving in the sky, uh, the big building, the little signal light, and the alley. So I've added a few effects as well. Uh, the two lights, the sort of lamp and the, the, sort of the, the light on top of the sign, have both got a Gaussian blur on them. And I think they're set to about th they're set to three. Yeah, they're set to three. And then what else have we got? Oh, and of course, yes, the, the, the kind of silhouette of the alley at the front, the kind of black bins and signs. That's also got a Gaussian blur. And that's set as six. So I've also added pegs to the layers that I know that I'm going to animate or move in 3D space during the animation. So for example, the, the alley front, which is obviously the kind of bins and the sign, the black signs and stuff, I, I want to bring them closer to the camera. So I'll nudge them in 3D space. So I, I've added a peg on there for that. Again, the light, I might need to move forward or backward depending on where I want Batman to be. So again, that needs a peg. Obviously the Batman symbol, that will need to move in the sky as well. So I've added a peg on that and that's, that's the other light and the actual city background as well what I'm going to do is as he's running along the top of the building I'm going to move the background ever so slightly in the opposite direction just to kind of give it a little bit more movement um, so hopefully that will add a bit of 3D space to it as he's running and the camera's moving with him so I wanted that to have a peg on as well the rest of it shouldn't need pegs that's why I've got the master peg so that should con um, control the other layers but basically that is it and obviously that all comes into a composite which I should change to pass through like so, I'll just save that. And that is basically it. So the background now is ready for animation as well as Batman himself. Okay, so I think that's about it for today, really. That's all I've got to show you. Um, so I hope that's been okay. I hope you've understood how I've drawn the background and how I've rigged it ready for animation. Um, so in the next video, I'll be doing the library and how, how to add these things to the library. And then obviously creating a new project file and, add, and putting those pro those items back from the library into the new project file. Obviously, with a kind of one scene animation like this, I could do it all, you know, within the scene. But to kind of to just show you how to use the library, I'll do that in the next video. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope it has been helpful and you've understood all that I've done today. If you haven't, please do leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Um, if you would like to watch a previous video in this series, please click on one of the um, buttons above my head or do check out my YouTube channel for lots more other videos. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please click on the red button above me. And of course, please do leave a comment or tweet me at Mr. John Taylor. 
and I'll be back very shortly with another video. All right, thanks for watching and bye for now.